This topic has been covered time and time again, from 2D vs 3D to Game Freak is running out of ideas to hot buff Pokemon in your area. But this video has something those others don't. Alright, before you get your Jigglypuffs in a twist, let me preface by saying I don't hate all new Pokemon designs, I think Game Freak is far from out of ideas, and I actually really like some of the new bangers. In fact, this video isn't about any particular problem with modern day Pokemon designs, but rather a hidden flaw that's always existed and just seems to get worse over time. All I'm trying to do is rather than try and argue and debate whether or not designs have gotten worse, I'm just going to be matter-of-factly discussing my objectively correct opinions as we go through the timeline of the Pokemon universe and see exactly where things went wrong. Spoiler, it's nowhere. Like a modern day dystopia, there was no one moment of downfall, it was a slow and everlasting creep to an unavoidable final product. Pokemon hasn't always released S-tier designs, in fact you could argue most of them were bad, as the first official sprites of these Pokemon? 8-bit, awkward poses, and a clear lack of detail compared to Pokemon even just a couple generations later. However, that's all a bit subjective because I personally find a lot of charm in these old designs and considering the limits of the technology at the time, <coughs> and the fact Nintendo actually used the push limits, <coughs> leaves this mark of unmistakable charm and care that you can especially see in the official watercolor art. Hell, a lot of Gen 2 Pokemon were just Gen 1s that didn't make the cut, but reaching back to my last point, at the end of the day, this is what we saw when Pokemon first dropped. I like apples and bananas. Me too, bro. Me too. But as the years went on, so did Pokemon. The graphics improved, hundreds of new creatures were added. Some excellent, some not so much. But what exactly is this hidden flaw I'm referring to and how far back does it date? I'm actually going to go out on a limb and say Gen 1 was the patient zero of this ever-growing problem to Pokemon designs. Enter Mr. Mime? I'm just as surprised as you are, as after I made my criteria of what makes up this hidden flaw, I went to the good old National Pokedex and went from Bulbasaur onward, trying to find the first Pokemon that fit the bill. And originally it was Embor, but after some more trials, I found this rabbit hole went a little deeper than I thought. But again, bringing us back to the big question, what is the hidden flaw? Now, I'm sure some of my astute viewers may think they're onto what I'm trying to say, and if you think I'm about to talk about how some Pokemon are looking too humanoid, you're actually wrong. Although I'd be lying if I said this wasn't a part of it, the true hidden flaw is that they're too personified. Think about it. Pokemon literally means pocket monsters, emphasis on the monsters. Hell, the original concept of the franchise was based on the creator's childhood passion of catching insects in the woods with his friends. However, it's very clear from the original 151, the general idea was basing them off animals, whether vividly or vaguely, and giving them more monstrous qualities. As Pokemon developed over the years, fans have noticed an increase in chibi style, cutesy, more marketable Pokemon, as opposed to more beasts, as well as a lot more humanoid critters. Not only are these Pokemon humanoid though, but they are way too characterized. For example, I can imagine Magmar living in the wild. It's bipedal and slightly humanoid. However, the things it likes are things to be expected of a fire-type duck thing, like living in volcanoes and fighting over territory with other species. Moving down the line, we got Pokemon like Machamp. A little harder to see living in the wild, very humanoid, but we've seen this line do so much throughout the series. Construction, helping people move house, gym leader companions, getting jobbed in the anime, showing how diverse these Pokemon can be, because they're monsters that you can assign personality traits if you so please. When you not only make them humanoid, but give them an inherently human theme, it can leave them feeling very one note. Consider Mr. Mime. Not only is he humanoid, he is given a very human theme. He is a mime. He does mime movements, has mime-like moves like Mimic and Barrier. He has a mime haircut. Close. His name is literally Mr. Mime. He says Mr. in his name. He's saying you can shove it. What? I can- As compared to some of the other Gen 1 human likes, Golduck, Alakazam, and even Jinx come to mind, although they stand on two legs with a human-like frame and build, wield man-made items, or even straight up wear human garbs, they're still very much treated like animals or monsters, and their descriptions tell you what they get up to as a species, but leave it vague enough for you to add on your own spice. Hell, those rose-colored glasses making it hard to see the video, then let's move down the line, because admittedly, Sock and Throw are much better examples. Their personality is... Human style martial arts. They are in full human garb and they fight like people. Oh my god, that is an old man with a skin condition. Please release him. Pokemon like Lucario, an aura sensing humanoid wolf Pokemon, gives this Pokemon a personality, but an animalistic monster like personality. Quaquavel, on the other hand, likes to salsa dance. Not only that, but I mean. Come on, it, the design is just way too on the nose. My Lucario may be an aura master, but I can easily see Lucario to Lucario having different interests. Coquavel, on the other hand, again, very one note. Another thing that gets to me is Pokemon who I just absolutely couldn't see living in the wild. This has always been a present problem for me regarding Pokemon since day one, but it just seems to get worse over time. Ampharos, Metacham, Grumpig. Sure, I can totally see them living in the wild. Jinx, eh, pushing the envelope, but sure. But where on Arceus Green Earth does Cerule Edge live in the wild? Nowhere, because 
because the method of evolution makes it very clear that even Game Freak couldn't live with seeing the entire DeviantArt drawn edgelord run around in the bushes. I don't care how cool it looks, I'm not training that cosplayer. Before I end this video and so the angry commenters don't call me a bot, let me go over what I think were good and bad designs in Gen 9 specifically so you can get a better idea of what I really mean. Pawmot, good. Quaquable, bad. Bellybolt, good. Palafin, bad. Cyclozar, pushing it Mr. Motorcycle, but good. Cerule Edge, seriously, how is this a wild animal? Also, I know this kind of goes against what I said, but I do love all these designs in a vacuum. It's just, God, I don't want to trick these. And again, it's not that they're humanoid, although I prefer more animalistic or monstrous designs like Mousehold and Garkanackle. I still really like low kicks. I can see these living in the wild. I can see these having unique personalities. To send things off, I don't really hate any Pokemon. I love Pokemon as a franchise. I even like their designs despite my gripes. It's just, when my Quaxwell evolved, I could never look at Pokemon the same again.